This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hey, cat lovers. Welcome to Nine Lives with Dr. Cat. I hope you are all feline fine today. I'm your host, Dr. Catherine Prim. I'm a small animal veterinarian and cat lover. And today is kind of different because I'm going to use my own experience with my cat and moving to a new house. I have invited Debbie Martin to talk with us today. Debbie is a licensed veterinary technician who is a specialist in behavior, and she is a fear-free certified professional as well. So she's going to give us some thoughts and tips and tricks about ways to make a move a little easier on our feline friends. So we'll be right back with Debbie Martin after a quick break. Does your dog itch, scratch, stink, or shed like crazy? Come to Dynavite for help. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite. Everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. Pick up two bottles of Super Mega Fish Oil. Get the third bottle free. Packed with omega-3, DHA, and EPA fatty acids. Super Mega is great for your dog's immune system, healthy skin, and soft, shiny fur. Dogs love it. Try Super Omega Fish Oil. Buy two. Get one free. At Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Nine Lives with Dr. Cat on Pet Life Radio. And I have Debbie Martin with me. Hi, Debbie. Hi, how are you doing today? I am doing great. So I recently got to experience what it is like to move with my current cat. And I haven't moved houses in about 18 years because I I swore I would never, ever move again. And so we just got finished doing that. And I know that as a Fear Free Certified Professional and a contributor to Fear Free Happy Homes, which we'll talk about, you have some ideas and thoughts that my listeners need to consider if they are considering a move. Exactly. Well, first of all, I want to just point out that you were describing what moving like was for you. You had decided you didn't want to move again because it's so stressful. (laughs) It's stressful for us as people to consider a move. And we're the ones that are consciously making that choice. We know that it's something that's going to be better usually. And we're looking to maybe downsize or upgrade or whatever, but we're making that choice. And it still is extremely stressful for us as humans. So can you imagine what it's like for our feline friends? All of a sudden, their world is getting turned upside down. Everything that was familiar becomes unfamiliar. And so a couple key tips. One, I want to make sure that we try to provide as much familiarity as possible. And ways we can do that is make sure we bring those litter boxes they were using at the old house. I know it's tempting, like, let's start fresh and new, get completely new boxes. Wait a month or so before you do that. Bring those old boxes that you've been using, even if they're a couple years old or even a couple months old, but they have that familiar odor of the house and the cat. Uh, So make sure we're bringing that. Obviously, they can be clean. They don't have to have no old litter in it. But going on that same tip, make sure you can continue to use the same type of litter your cat has been using. Don't switch brands all of a sudden. We want to try to keep things as familiar as possible. Bedding that the cat likes to lay on, blankets or beds that they have, don't wash them before going to the new location. You want to bring those old smells, those familiar scents with them to help kind of provide some security, at least initially. Same thing with the water bowls, food bowls or food puzzle toys that you're using for enrichment to feed your cat. Try not to introduce anything new. There will be enough new things in the environment that we don't need to complicate it with adjusting things that have been fairly stable in your cat's life. So that's kind of the the first step that I would consider. There certainly are other safety things that we would want to put into place, such as providing a sanctuary room for the cat. 
Did you find that you were able to do that with your cat? You no, know, I think that made a huge difference. My cat did really well with this move and I was very worried about it because cats are cats. And it is my understanding from my fear-free training that one of the most stressful things to a cat is an environment change. So I worried and dreaded and tried to do everything that I could possibly do. And, and I did create a safe place where Scamper was limited to one area to kind of get used to that and, and put himself into that and feel safe before we expanded that. So I think that was that was a very helpful tip for us. Yeah, definitely. Safe place or a sanctuary room, something that's familiar. I do it. I front load it too. I often will suggest to clients that before they move that they get the cat used to maybe being confined in a room with all the necessities because the the day you're moving or moving up to that as well, no pun intended on that, that they actually may become frightened with the changes. So certainly if there's people in the house that moving company people that are moving boxes or furniture, you want to make sure the cat doesn't get loose or get out. Safety is always important. So if they can be comfortable being kind of in a safe room that has all their needs, the litter box, uh, feeding station, water, comfortable spots to perch on, uh, toys, things that make that cat comfortable. That can help with the process as well so that when the actual moving day is happening, that they're not stressed in their home environment already before we have to travel in the car. And then when we get to the new home, yeah. Packing up was crazy stressful. And because of all my work, teaching Scamper about his carrier and going to the animal hospital with me. It is virtually stress-free for him to travel or begin his carrier. And he likes being at my animal hospital now. It took a little bit. But so for the day, the movers were in and out and they were leaving the doors open and things. I just took Scamper to work. That was his safe place while the doors were open. I was just afraid he was going to get frightened and run off. And then we were trying to move. And, you know, I just was very afraid of that. Yeah, great. Yeah, certainly that can be an option too, if the cat's comfortable. And, you know, obviously your cat has been acclimated to it. So that's perfect. Other options, if they're not, is actually getting, I really like the horizontal cat cages. So they are, you'll see them a lot of times at adoption for cat, you know, rescue organizations will have them. They're the multi-level cat cages. They're taller And they have little perches in them. So a litter box can be down the bottom and then they can have little beds that they can perch on in the cage. They're not very expensive. They're usually on wheels so you can move them if you need to fairly easily. And so getting the cat acclimated to something like that, if we're afraid doors are going to get opened and the cat could run out, that just is another way to keep the cat safe during the transition. And then also provides for that familiar space when you set it up in the new home as well. So starting small, I am always a little bit on the fence about how the cat's going to handle maybe being put into a safe room in a new house, because often that safe room will be where the owner is going to be. And so obviously with the move part, if there's still people coming and going, having them confined to a room that's not going to have them easily escape the house would be important. But then I would think kind of using a space that is occupied by the owners is going to be important because certainly the owners can provide some calm and safety for the cat and familiarity as well. I agree with that. We tried to keep the daily routine, the time that we do playtime and the time that we do feeding and all of that. We tried to change nothing else. It was only the environment. And I think that really helped. Yeah, it sounds like it was really a great success for for your move and all the hard work. And it's not too hard of work, right? It should be things that we're kind of naturally doing maybe with our cats and interacting with them, but maybe a little bit more purposeful as we're getting ready for the move. Uh, But that's paid off. It paid off in the long run with making that a very smooth, low stress situation for your cat. Now, not all cats will have that benefit, you know? Uh, So there are other things that we can do to help create calm. Certainly considering using things like calming pheromones or, calming music, getting them used to that in the home. They actually make music for cats. One of them is called I Calm Cat or Through a Cat's Ear. It's very similar. They're the same company. It just has different branding. But that is something that may have a calming effect. And if you introduce it in the existing home, the familiar location, that can kind of transition through the move. The other is using pheromones or calming pheromones. 
like seal away that could be used either in the spray or diffuser. So certainly I would probably for the move using a spray, like spraying it on a towel, letting it sit for 10 to 15 minutes before your cat's exposed to it, and then kind of bringing that into the new location. The diffusers that plug into the wall, they take a, a good four to six hours of being plugged in before they're kind of emitting that chemical, not really a chemical, <laughs> it's, a, it's a pheromone into the environment. I'm hesitant to call it odor, although it'd be the best way to explain it. It's not really an odor. It's more a chemical message that the cat can understand and produces calming. Well, I actually did use feel away spray. I, I do think it helps. I know it helped us because things went so well for us. But uh, I was worried about Scamper scratching on places, things being different for him, him not really knowing. So I made sure to spray some of the feel a scratch or smear some of the feel a scratch on the places that I did want him to scratch. I don't know if it helped or not, but I, I thought it did. So those products have been pretty valuable to us. I also have the benefit of being a veterinarian. So I did take advantage of what I know about pre-visit pharmaceuticals. And I did manage his anxiety for the first few days with an oral medication that I prescribed for him. So I would encourage my listeners that are planning a move or even a home remodel, talk to your veterinarian and see if they can contribute as well. Definitely. That was the next on my list, actually, of things I was going to say. If we can't create calm, if we're, if we're concerned about the cat being really anxious about it, you know, certainly proactive use of something, whether it be a pharmaceutical a medication or a nutraceutical. There are some really good nutraceuticals out there available through your veterinarian that might be something that is easier to get into your cat. Obviously, giving cats medication of any sort can be challenging for many of them. So finding some Something that would work and it's easy to administer is something you can talk to your veterinarian about. But there are lots of choices out there. And certainly fear-free practitioners are going to be pretty versed in medications or nutraceuticals that would help decrease fear, anxiety, and stress in cats. Well, I completely agree. And I think that there are lots of resources for cat owners to find all in one place about fear-free veterinarians and fear-free happy homes. And I know that Debbie and I both encourage all of our listeners to check out fear-free happy homes online because there are articles to read and videos to watch that can help you get to know what your cat is telling you and help head off some of these anxiety issues. Wouldn't you agree, Debbie? Yes. Uh, fear-free happy homes is a great resource. It's free to everyone, pet owners, veterinary professionals. And Dr. Martin, my husband, and I both review the content that goes on there. So we know it's good behavioral advice. It's accurate information. They've got really short videos, great blogs, excellent information on there, and a lot of information about cats. Okay, so let's take a quick break and come back and talk a little bit more about what to expect from moving and, and maybe even remodeling change of environment for cats. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Dr. Katherine Prim, and I would like to make you aware of some products that I've discovered, Dr. Elsie's Pet Products. So you all know that I have a cat named Scamper, and Scamper is a little bit sensitive, so I have to choose sort of special stuff for Scamper. Dr. Elsie's Ultra Litter has been kind of a godsend for us. It's made with clean ingredients and it's low on dust, so it sort of addresses the needs that Scamper personally has. You can feel really good about choosing Dr. Elsie's pet products because they're veterinarian formulated and they're tested. So they combine science and the love for pets to meet the needs of even the most sensitive pets like my Scamper. Here's the really good news. You can get a rebate. Dr. Elsie's will pay you up to $20 for your first bag of Ultra Litter or any Dr. Elsie's litter by visiting drelsies.com forward slash Dr. Cat. That's D-R-E-L-S-E-Y-S dot com forward slash Dr. Cat, which is D-R-K-A-T. So check it out. Give it a try and get up to $20 back. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com Welcome back to Nine Lives with Dr. Cat on Pet Life Radio. 
And as a person who has just moved to a new home with a cat and a dog, I was talking with Debbie Martin today, and we are learning about ways to make things go smoothly for cats. So right before the break, we were talking about Fear Free Happy Homes and what a great resource it is. And I want to kind of touch on some of the hazards that may exist in a new home that you that wouldn't think of as being a hazard if your cat explores an area that isn't safe or just any kind of hazard. Debbie, can you think of some things we might want to highlight for my listeners? Certainly, depending on the condition of the home that you're moving into. So what kind of cleaners have been used before you moved in? Obviously, if it's a new home, even then we still have to be worried, right? Because of construction fumes, those types of things. So cats can be really sensitive to smells or chemicals and and, um, the smell of other animals. If it's a house that's been previously lived in, could be a stress factor for them. So things that we may not be able to detect on our own could be unsettling to them. Trying to make sure the area is cleaned with disinfectants that aren't going to be noxious to the cat would be helpful. So oftentimes we see people go in and want to do that thorough cleaning, but they're using a lot of bleach products or things that have a really strong odor, not only to people, but it's 10 times worse for the cat. And so really being considerate of that and making sure they're not getting into chemicals that could be dangerous for them. If the home has anything that has been left in it, chemicals or anything like that, we want to make sure we get those out of reach of the cat, so to speak. If there is a basement with a crawl space or even like a sump pump type thing, uh, which we don't have actually in Central Texas, most people don't have basements here, but, uh, but when I lived in the Midwest, we did. And so being really aware of places or crevices that the cat could get hidden or trapped in, really getting down on your hands and feet, so to speak, and looking at it from the cat's view, but also up high. Cats use vertical space. So are there cupboards that they could get back behind? One of the houses I lived in in Indiana, they had kind of that open ceiling. And so my cats could actually get up on top of the cupboards. And I was concerned that if they shimmied down behind kind of the corner one, that they might not be able to get out of there. And so putting a block there so my cats couldn't climb down or get stuck was going to be important. But really looking for places that cats could either get out of the house or get stuck in a tight spot would be fairly important to make sure that the new house is safe. I agree completely because a cat can get into a really small space. I've actually seen some patients at my animal hospital. They moved into a new home and they didn't realize there were rat poisons in the basement and they hadn't checked back behind some things. And so that was that was sort of a scary an issue for them. So yeah, walk around on your hands and knees. It's you're not too proud to see things the way your cat might see. Also, the windows. I think making sure the windows have screens and are secured because a a cat that gets away from you in a place where they don't know where they are is even worse. Don't you agree? I agree. And that's a really good point. Also, making sure your cat is microchipped and that the information you have is up to date with that company, because if they do get lost or frightened and get away from you, that may be the way to get them home. Collars can come off cats, especially, you know, like you want to be really careful. I do like having a collar on a cat when we're moving them, but you want kind of the breakaway collar so that they get hung up on anything. They don't get stuck, so to speak. Uh, So those can actually come off, but those are a great quick identification way. However, the microchip is that permanent chip that's there, and you just want to make sure you keep that information up to date with the company that is hosting it. And with your new address, I've learned. I definitely with your new address. And also, I think it's a great idea to go ahead and find a veterinarian in your new area. Even if your cat's fine, it's good to have that resource and that relationship available to you when you need them. Exactly. It's, it's so much easier to have that established if you're moving long distance or even way across town. Having someone locally nearby, even if you love your veterinarian, and you're going to drive a half hour, 45 minutes. I've been known to do that to go back where my cat or my dog likes to go to the vet. <laughs> I'm a crazy pet owner and lots of people are. However, having someone locally nearby in case there's an emergency that you're established with, that you feel comfortable with, that your cat has had positive experiences with is a great idea. 
I agree. I have clients that drive a long way to see me as well. But I always say, you know what, find somebody right by your house because in an emergency, I don't want you wasting time to get all the way over here. So I think that's great advice. So uh, I really just kind of want to, I think this has been great. I think this is really helpful. I implemented a lot of the things that you recommended and I found that it worked really well for scampers. So, so listeners, don't forget keeping things sort of the same, providing a safe place, daily routines. Also, do not hesitate to check into Fear Free Happy Homes because those are free resources available to you and you just wouldn't believe how amazing. I mean, it it is just an amazing amount of really good quality resources for pets on all kinds of things. And Debbie and her husband really review those things and make sure they're really good quality. So fearfreehappyhomes.com. And please just check it out. If you have any questions for me about this topic today, I can tell you from my experience as someone who is still kind of unpacking and as a veterinarian, and I also can put you in touch with other people to help you if you have problems. I am on social media, Catherine Prim DVM on Facebook. I'm on Instagram and Twitter and I'm everywhere. Debbie, thank you so much. It's been so fun to talk to you today. It's great to talk to you. So I am hoping that I will not move again for quite a long time. (laughs) But if I have to, I know how to make it a little bit easier for Scamper. So I want to thank Debbie Martin for being with us today. And I always want to thank my terrific producer, Mark Winter. And also thanks for joining me for Nine Lives with Dr. Cat on Pet Life Radio. And all my cat-loving listeners, go out and have a perfect day. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.